This is T. Lobsang Rampa, bringing to you some information on a subject of which so many of you have written to me. The subject, a very popular one, meditation. What do you think when you hear that word, meditation? Do you think of some poor little scantily clad man sitting in a strange, strange attitude, contemplating his navel? Do you? The dictionary on the subject of meditate says to plan mentally, to design, to exercise the mind in contemplation. Well, even the dictionary can be wrong, you know, because actually contemplation comes after meditation. When you have meditated and got as much information as you can from that meditation, then you contemplate the matter which you have just discovered. But meditation is more than a physical attitude. It's more than sitting in some contorted posture, beloved of the cultist. Meditation is a spiritual attitude, a spiritual discipline, a spiritual exercise. But, wait, wait, before you start, why do you want to meditate? What is your real purpose in meditation? Unless you have a sincere purpose, a sincere interest, you may find it difficult to attain the right degree of meditation. Correct meditation, then, is a spiritual discipline which enables one to put one's mind in good health. And if you can meditate correctly, then you will have no mental illness, no mental afflictions. Meditation will give you tranquility, inner peace, Composure. Meditation? Yes. Yes. It can soothe away the thoughts that plague and trouble one's mind. Another aspect of meditation is that if one meditates in a certain way, one can become aware of all there is to know about a certain thing. Look at a flower. Take it in your hands, meditate upon it. Look at the flower. Look at the petals, look at the inner part of the flower. See how it attaches to the stem. See further. Let the matter regress. See the bud and before the bud. See the stem and the main stem. Go down and see the roots. See the tendrils stretching out into the earth, sucking nourishment from the soil. Go further. You can see the seed, the seed which formed that plant. Further, further back, you see the seed which formed the plant before. One can meditate and visualize the parent plant and the grandparent plant. But be sure and do not confuse meditation with concentration. Because in meditation, one does not 
concentrate. Perhaps at this stage, I should clarify matters. I say, meditate upon this, meditate upon that. And you could answer quite reasonably, but how can I meditate? Using the word meditate doesn't explain how to go about a thing. All right, let's see what we can do together, shall we? Look at this rose. It is in flower. Look at the petals. Examine it carefully. Do you see what appears to be veins? What appears to be arteries even? The little capillary tubes which take the nourishment to the furthest part of each and every petal, each and every branch. Look further, look deeper. Let your conscious awareness subside. Let your subconscious awareness arise. And then your inner vision will perceive a cellulose network. You will perceive the structure of the leaf as being of the finest of Flemish lace, delicate, intricate, with its threads forming a network, little cages, the skeleton of a petal. And in those little cages, within the framework which is composed of the cellulose skeleton of the leaf or the petal or the branch, you will observe the flesh, the pulp, the colouring. Put aside reasoning thought. Reason, so-called, is man's worst enemy. Man reasons this and that means something else. But too often, man comes up with the wrong answer. So, allow your reason to subside. Allow the thought which is within your volition to subside. Before you started this meditation exercise, you will have told your subconsciousness very firmly I will meditate upon whatever it is. Let us say a rose. I will meditate deeply upon this rose. I will meditate deeply upon this rose. I will meditate deeply upon this rose. And my consciousness will not intrude. My thought will not obtrude. My subconscious self will rise to the fore and give me true cosmic apperception. When you've said that, look at the flower. Look at our rose. Or you can look at a leaf and at the structure of a leaf. You can see with your cosmic consciousness, that which has gone before, like turning back a history book of nature. You look, and your conscious thinking mind is diminished. Then, with your subconsciousness, which is nine-tenths of you upon this earth, you can get busy with the task of turning back those fascinating pages of history compiled by nature. This is a matter which is the innate knowledge of every person who considers meditation. Because when you seriously consider meditation, then you are similar to the plant which puts out buds ready to flower. You, then, in wanting meditation, are ready 
to flower, ready to flower into this exquisite knowledge. And as you flower, your knowledge of the technique of meditation will come to you as clearly and as automatically as did the knowledge of how to walk, how to breathe, how to talk. But, uh, as I said, after meditation comes concentration. But if you let concentration intrude when you are trying meditation, you will find that concentration will actually stop meditation. When you have meditated, and you have discovered all that may be known about a certain object or subject, sit back. Sit back and think over those things. That is when meditation ends and contemplation takes over. Think of, of a sunset. Contemplate the processes of the sunset. Contemplate the apparent going down of the sun so that it shines more and more through thicker and thicker layers of air. Contemplate the rays of sunlight being filtered through the thicker layers of the atmosphere. Contemplate how various dusts and gases in that thicker atmosphere alter the colors of the sunlight and produce all those glorious sunsets about which the poets rave. But contemplation? No, no, we are concerned more with meditation at present. Many people say that they're going to meditate. But actually, few have any conception whatever about real meditation. They say they are going to meditate. What they really mean is, oh, they're just going to sit down somewhere and think about things. Things are going to go round and round in their heads. They're going to get more and more confused. And meditation gets a bad name. That's not meditation. Thinking about a thing is not meditation. Meditation demands that one does certain things. There are certain conditions without which it is difficult to meditate. One must be insulated from outside influences, outside magnetic influences. Consider your household electric wiring. Here you have wires bringing electricity to your cooking oven or to your lighting fixtures. Those wires have to be carefully insulated each from the other <clears throat> because unless they are so insulated, there is a danger of a short circuit which would cause the house fuses to blow or even to set the house itself on fire. Electricity always takes the shortest path, the path of least resistance. And electricity in the wrong place, in a place where it is not desired, is quite useless. It is just the same with that power called meditation. Just the same. We have to safeguard the energy contained within the process of meditation. We have to insulate ourselves from influences which would short circuit our power. And so it is good to have a meditation robe, a special article of clothing to cover you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Something like a monk's robe. That's one of the reasons monks have such robes, you know. Look at page 1, 
53 of my book, Chapters of Life. Here we have a drawing which will give you quite a good idea for a meditation robe, something you can make up yourself. It's easy. Make it of black cotton or black silk, but not, not nylon. N you don't want any of these synthetic things because, well, they do inhibit meditation. It must be something of the natural fiber and it must be black. Make this robe so that you can tuck it beneath the soles of your feet. Make it so that you can cover your eyes. Remember, you have to leave your mouth uncovered. Otherwise, you'll overheat yourself or suffocate. This will greatly help in the process of meditation. Then you will have to go to a quiet room where no one else will enter and disturb you. A quiet room with dim lighting, with nothing to distract your attention. When you are ready to meditate, sit in any position which you find comfortable. Any position at all. You do not need to sit cross-legged. You do not need to stand on one foot or, or wave the other one in the air. Just sit so that you are comfortable. Just sit so that you do not get cramp. If you find it more convenient to recline, then by all means, recline. You can meditate just as easily. The position that one adopts has no bearing whatever on meditation nor on contemplation. As long as you are insulated, that is all that matters. It seems that time is running out on us. So, this is an opportunity, quite a good opportunity, to turn over to the other side. Will you turn over the recording, please?